and I finally look to Andrew Mitchell, MP, to close the case for the opposition. Well, Mr President, uh, many congratulations on your election uh, to that chair. And may I congratulate uh, both Elizabeth and Julian on the cases they put in this no-confidence debate uh, tonight. Um, and may I congratulate uh, Oxford. I speak, of course, as someone from the other place, a former president of the Cambridge Union, the oldest uh, union in the world. <laughs> May I congratulate uh, Oxford on electing yet another Oxford graduate as Prime Minister, the second uh, woman. It's a singular distinction for your uh, university. However, when I was last uh, back speaking at Cambridge, they warned me in hushed tones when I, if I came to Oxford again not to go anywhere near something called the Bullingdon Club, <laughs> where, where I understand that Men are men and pigs are nervous. <laughs> and that not all those members of the Bullington Club were actually reading animal husbandry at Oxford University. <laughs> Mr. President, it's three years ago that I had the pleasure of uh, opposing this motion here. Not a night, I'm afraid to say, on which this side of the House was very uh, successful. And since then, we have uh, had a full majority Conservative government. We've seen the Liberal Party, uh, rather unfairly in my view, decimated at the uh, elections and uh, uh, now in a state of very considerable disarray. We've seen UKIP achieve their heart's desire. UKIP, after all, is what it says on the tin. It wanted to leave the European Union and we've done that. And we've seen a Tory renewal um, uh, carried out, I think, with unprecedented violence with 29 of my colleagues summarily uh, sacked. Um, and, uh, Mr. President, I've uh, not been able to watch the Game of Thrones in the past on the grounds that it was too violent, but following the events in the Tory party in July, I'm going to give it another go now. Um, but, but at the heart of all of this, as has been uh, mentioned several times tonight, uh, to have no confidence in the government, you must have confidence in an alternative, a point made very well by... Julian, and the fact is, at the moment, like it or not, there isn't an alternative. Labour is not an alternative uh, yet. I'm closer and more friendly with the leader of the Labour Party than uh, John is. I went to America, to Washington, with him to try and get Shaka Armour released from Guantanamo Bay, where he had outrageously been locked up by the Americans. Uh, Labour has shed experienced parliamentarians. Uh, they are beached. The Labour Party has become a movement. It's not a government in waiting. And so, in seeking your support tonight to oppose this motion, uh, I ask you to reflect on that, but I fully accept that that is not an adequate reason to get you into the opposition uh, lobby. So it seems to me that there are, Mr. President, four key questions which beg an affirmative answer if uh, we are to win this debate tonight. The first of those is who is going to keep us safe? We live, as a number of speakers have said, in an extremely unsafe world at the moment. Narrow nationalism is on the march from Moscow down to Cairo. The United States is in an exceedingly isolationist mood with an election which, frankly, is discrediting democracy. The EU is in turmoil, not just because of Brexit, but because of the Euro strains, Greece, uh, migration, uh, climate change absolutely critical that we tackle climate change. This is a government which has put billions of pounds of public money into uh, precisely that. And I'm incredibly proud to have served in a government which, in spite of the austerity in Britain at the time, stuck by its word to the poorest people in the world and brought in the 0.7 commitment to help the poorest and most wretched people on the climate. Uh, Labour had talked about it for years, but it was a Conservative-led government which actually uh, did it. And in spite of all the difficulties that we face, it will, in the end, make uh, this uh, world a safer and more prosperous one. Slow, uh, difficult, unremitting, but the right thing uh, to do. And if you look at what is happening at the moment in Syria, I submit to uh, this House a far more major crisis than Brexit, with much more significant effects on our children and our grandchildren. You look at the way that Russia is pushing over 
the international structures in the world of the United Nations in the same way that the Italians and the Germans did to the League of Nations in the 1930s. It is a very, very dangerous world and we need a strong government led by a strong Prime Minister who understands the need to uh, tackle modern day slavery, who un understands the need to tackle what she herself has called the burning injustices which exist in our society. So, I submit that if you believe that this government is in the best position, uh, better than the Labour Party as it stands today, to take over the reins and make us safer, then I submit you should vote on our side of the motion uh, tonight. The second question is who will best handle Brexit? And that's already been uh, discussed uh, by several speakers tonight. Uh, I never wanted to leave. I'm on a different side to uh, John, paradoxically. But we are where we are. I understand how it happened. There is fury amongst the younger generation in my constituency. I often meet sixth formers and hear what they have to say. My own uh, two children are absolutely furious, but we respect the will of the electorate. It is the settled will. We are going to leave. And I submit that in the government, we have the best people to chart these extraordinarily difficult uh, seas. And uh, to have those people who believe in it carrying out this negotiation, who have the skills and the experience, in my view, we can have confidence in them and they are the right people to handle it. The third question is who will tackle one of Britain's greatest problems today? And we've all danced around it and all of us, all politicians of all parties have been unsuccessful and that is social mobility. The cohesion of our country depends upon far greater social mobility. It went backwards under Tony Blair and it hasn't advanced a great deal under us. And it's become more complex because of uh, globalisation. But tackling the issues of social mobility are absolutely critical to, certainly to my party's future, but to the country's future as well. And Theresa May completely understands this. If you look, for example, at the part of the world where I represent, if you look at the West Midlands, we've been quite successful in charting the course of globalisation. We have increased to the highest level employment. We've cut unemployment in the one region of the country where unemployment has historically been stubbornly uh, high. We've seen a huge increase in apprenticeships. Uh, we've seen a quite extraordinary success in tackling youth unemployment. In my constituency, youth unemployment over the last three years is down by 85%. That is a stunning result and we need to do more of it and elsewhere. So uh, on the question of social mobility, I think that Theresa May is speaking good sense. I think you can trust that her heart and her head are in the right place, and I think that we should give her every chance to show what uh, she can do. And finally, and fourthly, the question, uh, and I do not say this to ingratiate this side of the House uh, with the audience tonight, but we have to address the issue of intergenerational fairness. This is a huge, major, looming issue. Your generation has seen huge advantages, but also huge challenges, which were never faced by my generation. There's been uh, allusion tonight to the fact that you have loans. My generation had grants when they went to university, but, but my generation expected to be able to retire on a decent uh, pension. Your generation doesn't know whether you'll even get a pension, let alone whether you'll be able to retire at any age uh, at all. And looking after an aging population, my generation, people who are living much longer now. That is a real challenge and we have to address this issue of intergenerational uh, fairness in a way that we have not faced up to in the past. We have a much less static jobs market, much more challenges and although as I say this government has delivered fuller employment than ever before, the challenges on housing and last year we built more houses than in any year of the Labour government between 1997 and 2010. We are determined to tackle this in the way that his Lordship uh, described um, and also to build more houses and tackle the other aspects of intergenerational fairness. So, I urge you, Mr President, tonight to reject this, notion, this motion because the government that Mrs May is leading needs time to show that it can succeed on these vital issues. The alternatives are either as yet unformed or unsighted or in chaos. There is a grave international situation which is going to demand experience and stability, which the current government, in my submission, is in a position to provide. So I urge you to reject this motion tonight. <laughs>